Our story begins like no other. A certain Zyke of the Zoom variety had been pondering to himself about a certain plot point in Luigi's Mansion. How in the lost levels did Mario get captured by King Boo? He's adventured through countless ghost houses containing way more booze than 50, and has physically triumphed over way bigger booze, so how did he lose? This led him to do some digging that would help him uncover Mario's story in Luigi's Mansion. To figure out the puzzle of what exactly happened to Mario, we need to gather evidence from the instruction booklet and game. The former tells us that Luigi had received an unexpected message informing him that he had won a huge mansion, along with a map that leads there. He got excited and phoned Mario, telling him the great news, and they both agreed to meet each other there to celebrate. The booklet also tells us that Mario had arrived first. Upon starting the game, we see Luigi walk up to and enter the mansion. Once inside, there's no sign of Mario, and he meets up with Professor E. Gad, who testifies that he had seen Mario walk up to the mansion without even stopping to chat and never return. After Luigi tells E. Gad that he'd won this mansion in a contest he never entered, E. Gad claims that the mansion had appeared just a few days ago, and that the spirits have fooled him. Later on, we learn what became of Mario. King Boo had trapped him inside a portrait. However, this capturing doesn't seem to be as simple as Mario entering the mansion and BAM, he's a portrait. A lot of his belongings are scattered throughout the place, which implies he was in there for quite a while before he was securely caught. But something's off. When Luigi arrives, all the doors are locked. So how did Mario make it to various parts of the mansion? It's quite possible that for some reason, the doors weren't locked when he arrived. Anyways, Madame Clairvoya, a friendly fortune-telling ghost, helps Luigi in observing Mario's lost belongings, so we'll use her as a reference. First up is Mario's cap, which is found in the washing machine of the laundry room. Luigi observes that it's been laundered recently, which is backed up by Clairvoya, who says that it's so clean, as if someone just washed it. Adding on, Luigi notes that he washes his cap by hand, whereas Mario washes it using a washing machine, exactly where we found the cap. The second item is Mario's letter. We find it folded up in a little birdhouse in the courtyard, which oddly resembles Mario and Luigi's own mailbox back home. Clairvoya reads the letter to us as, Look out for booze, Luigi, and then remarks that the letter must have been written in quite a hurry. The third item is Mario's star. We find it in the observatory on the second floor. However, unlike the previous items we've discussed, this one seems to have been magically sealed inside the room itself, as Luigi needs to destroy a moon in order for the star to appear. Since Luigi makes contact with this star and doesn't turn invincible, we can be sure that this star isn't a superstar, but a power star, most likely from Super Mario 64. In that game, we can see Mario summon these stars and apply their energy to locked doors in order to unlock them, making it likely that he used that same technique to hide this star in this room. The fourth item is Mario's glove. Luigi remarks that it's still sweaty. Clairvoya says it's still damp with the sweat of the living. The fifth and final item is Mario's shoe. Luigi says that it smells, like Mario's feet, whereas Clairvoya comments, the soul is so worn, as if he's walked a thousand miles. These last two items are found in locked chests, which are only revealed when all the ghosts in the room have been vanquished, implying that the ghosts hid these items themselves. One last detail about Mario's belongings is that he can be seen fully equipped with his cap, glove, and shoe, despite having lost these items within the mansion. This lets us know that for some reason, he brought spares. Now let's talk about the first toad we meet. He exclaims, you finally made it! Princess Peach asked me to come here to look for Mario. He left when he heard that you'd won a mansion. If Peach and the Toads had seen Mario depart, then that means Mario was likely at Princess Peach's castle before he left, which completely explains why Luigi had to phone him and arrange a meetup, since they were in two different places. That's all the evidence we've got. It's time to reveal the truth behind the capturing of Super Mario. A few days prior to the incident, the leader of Ghosts, King Boo, had created a mansion out of thin air. He wished to exact revenge upon the Mario Bros for defeating his Boo brethren in their past adventures. To do this, he needed some way to lure them in, so he sent over an envelope which contained a disingenuous message, congratulating them on having won a mansion. His plan was for the brothers to read it and arrive at the mansion together, but as fortune would have it, only the younger brother was home at the time. Luigi was skeptical of the message at first, since he hadn't entered in any contests. Despite this, he excitedly called Mario, who was staying over at Princess Peach's castle, to tell him the news. Mario! Hey Luigi! Yoo-hoo! 
they both agreed to meet each other at the mansion to celebrate. But little did Luigi know, his brother had other plans. Mario didn't have a map, so he viewed the mansion from afar in order to gauge where it was. Having experience with the ghost houses, he grew suspicious of the mansion he and his brother had supposedly won, and decided he would check it out for himself first, a mistake he would soon come to regret. He took with him a power star for extra strength, pieces of paper and a pencil to take notes, and spare clothes so he could stay overnight at the place in the event it wasn't actually haunted. With these items in tow, he traveled directly up to the mansion with such focus that he hadn't noticed Professor E. Gad just a little ways away. Upon entering the mansion, Mari discovered that all the lights were turned on, all the doors were unlocked, and there weren't any ghosts in sight. King Boo created this setup as a ruse to let the brothers' guards down. However, his initial plan of cleanly capturing both of them at once fumbled due to Mario's early arrival. Assuming Luigi wasn't far behind, he and his minions laid hidden and waited for their chance to trap them both. Mario, fully unaware of the predicament he'd been caught in, explored rooms of the mansion with a more relaxed demeanor. He eventually entered the laundry room, which was a short distance from where he first entered. At this point, he had mistakenly deemed the place safe and felt comfortable enough to wash his spare clothes. He set down his shoe and glove beside the washing machine, put his cap inside of it, and turned it on. King Boo at this time must have realized that Luigi wasn't coming anytime soon, so he made quick preparations to capture Mario while he was still vulnerable. He locked the doors to the foyer, shrouded the entire inside of the mansion in darkness, and seconds later, made a beeline for Mario. With quick reaction time, Mario narrowly avoided King Boo and escaped the laundry room, leaving behind a cap in the washing machine and his other belongings which the Boos then took and locked away in chests. Mario's instincts led him along the hallway wall to the foyer doors, and after a few faulty attempts at budging them open, he quickly realized an easy escape wasn't possible anymore. He instantly dashed through the unlit hallway, desperate to get away from King Boo. A thought weighed in on his mind as he ran. If he did get caught, what's to stop the ghost from pulling the same trick on Luigi as they did him? Wishing to avoid this worst case scenario, Mario brought out paper and a pencil and hurriedly wrote down the message, Look out for booze, Luigi. This way, he can ensure that his brother wouldn't mistakenly believe the mansion was safe, just as he had. Mario folded the letter up, reached the end of the hallway, and stepped foot into the courtyard. He needed a place to hide the letter, a place the booze wouldn't look, but Luigi would. Luckily, a mailbox shaped quite similar to the own back home was visible. He threw the letter in and kept running, not giving King Boo any time to catch up. Mario ran upstairs to the second floor, and in an effort to lose the ghost, he dashed through Astral Hall and hid in the observatory. This was a hopeless effort, however, as King Boo had total mastery of this mansion, and it wasn't long before Mario heard the ghost approaching. He took out his power star, saddened by the fact it ended up not being useful since he was at first caught off guard and now cornered. Accepting his fate, he put his faith in his brother and imbued the Power Star's energy with the room, sealing it in such a way that no ghost could ever steal it. Seconds later, King Boo had arrived and successfully trapped Mario inside a portrait, storing him deep down in the secret altar beneath the mansion, completely unaware that his ghost failed to hide Mario's cap, letter, and star, which would turn out to be of use to the very same person that would eventually undo all his actions and seal him away.